welcome to Fitness Training Solutions and part four of our Anatomy and Physiology series. So, we are going to look at part two of the muscular system today. Now, in part one, I did explain to you that I would look at what we would like to call the sliding filament theory in more detail. So, as promised, before I share with you the outcomes, here's the sliding filament theory. So the sliding filament theory occurs within the sarcomere, which is the unit of muscle contraction. Now, for a muscle contract, contract, it requires calcium and ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. So those chemicals react with each other, and a nervous stimulus causes the myosin heads to attach to the actin, which form cross bridges. The myosin heads pivot and pull the actin towards the center of the sarcomere, and this process is repeated continually. The mycin are known as the thick protein filaments, and they attach further along the actin, which is known as the thin filament. And this process is known as muscle contraction, or what we would like to call the sliding filament theory. Now I've cleared that up for you. What are today's outcomes for part two of the muscular system? Well. Hopefully you should know the name and locate the area, um, areas of anterior and posterior skeletal muscle. We're going to recap on that again. I'll give you an opportunity to have a look at that one more time. Describe different types of muscle action and identify joint actions brought about by specific muscle groups. So that's what we're looking at, um, at working through for part two. Now, here's the anterior, meaning the front of the human body. So what are we looking at in terms of muscles? Hopefully you know these all off by heart now because you've been revising hard. So the first one, pectoralis major for the pecs, bicep brachii, you've got the rectus abdominis, the deltoids, the internal obliques, you've got the quadriceps, the adductors, the tibialis anterior, external obliques, upper trapezius, iliopsis, and then when we go towards the posterior muscles now, so our back muscles, what are we looking at? We've got the latissimus dorsi, or our lats for sure. The gluteus maximus, hamstrings, gastrocnemius, or calf, soleus, triceps brachii, so our triceps, our hip adductors, trapezius, our rhomboids, erectus spinae. So the key principles of skeletal muscle and how they work. So skeletal muscle, they have a start and end point, which we know as an origin and insertion. They cross joints and attach bones to so levers. They contract and pull on bones to bring about specific joint actions to align and position the body. So they shorten, they lengthen, or they may require no movement at all. Skeletal muscles work in pairs. So one muscle contracts, which is known as the prime mover, and the opposing muscle relaxes, known as the antagonist. So when we're looking at origins and insertions, what are we looking at? So skeletal muscles have recognizable end fixed via tendons onto bones. So the origin the attachment point of a muscle that remains relatively fixed during muscle contraction. Muscular atta attachment is nearest to the midline of the trunk, the proximal. So as you can see here, that's the origin. And what muscle are we looking at? Hopefully you know by now this is the gastrocnemius. The insertion, so the attachment point of the muscle that moves during muscle contraction. Muscular attachments furthest from the midline of the trunk, so the distal end. So, for selected muscles, name the joints crossed and locate the origins and insertions. So, types of muscle contraction. We've got concentric, so known as positive. The muscles generate enough force to overcome gravity and lift a resistance while the fibers are shortening. So that's known as concentric. So muscles, the muscle fibers are shortening. 
The eccentric, which is known as negative, the eccentric is where the muscles lengthen. So the muscle generates force to control a resistance while its fibers are lengthening to lower the resistance. So as you can see on the diagram to the right, this lady's performing a bicep curl. As she lifts the bar up, she's in a concentric phase. And as she lowers the bar down, she's what's known as the eccentric phase of the workout. And then we have isometric. So isometric is the muscles generate force to control the resistance while the fibers remain at the same length. So in this case, you can see this lady's performing a plank. But what are the roles of the muscles? So this is a basic tricep extension you're gonna see here. So the prime mover or agonist, meaning the leader, the primary muscle driving the desired action. In this case, the tricep brachii. The antagonist, meaning the opponent, the muscle that drives the opposite movement to the agonist. So in this case, the biceps brachii. The synergist, meaning work together, a muscle that aids or modifies agonist movement. For in this case, the posterior deltoid, so the back of the deltoid would be the synergist. And then you've got the fixator, meaning to fast, fasten, a muscle that stabilizes and locks down movement at another joint to promote effective movement of the agonist. So in this case, the upper trapezius. So what I want you to do is sel select some muscles, practice yourself, find an exercise, where this muscle contracts and works as a prime mover and an agonist. Name that agonist muscle. Describe the concentric and eccentric movement phase of the exercise selected. And practice these with various muscles. Now we give you an idea for the biceps and triceps. Now think of some other muscles and how they work. As I say, this is a very short overview for part two. We already had part one. And this short series today for the muscles hopefully helps you locate the anterior and posterior skeletal muscles again, the type of muscle actions, and the joint actions brought about by specific muscle groups. I'm Ben, and once again, thank you for joining me, and I will speak to you shortly in part five.